Hey guys, got a quick video here for you. Um, we got a couple Geigers here. The, the one on the left is the, is the GQ GMC 300E Geiger. And the one on the right is the SafeCast B Geige kit. And the book you see is the Bulletin of Standards, Volume 3. Scholar Select, United States National Bureau of Standards. Okay. Now, the reason this book is important when we're talking about Geigers is on page 80 and 81. And this is, can be found online. Just look up Bulletin of the Bureau of Standards, Volume 3, pages 80 and 81. These are pages 80 and 81. Well, should be, let's see, 81 and 82, I suppose. 81 and 82. Okay? So, I'll go ahead and kind of give you the idea. The inverse square law is the, the basis of all radiological measurements. Okay? And it, it talks about a sphere and distance and a point source. Um, there is an issue with this law that people don't understand. And it has to deal with extended sources. So I'll go ahead and read this part. Since these two laws are deduced for sources of infinitesimal dimensions, errors of considerable magnitude may result in applying them to extended sources. Particularly so is the, particularly is this so in the case of the inverse square law. This law underlies the great majority of practical photometric measurements and its applicability is seldom questioned. Indeed, when it is questioned, it is usually on the ground that it, since the source is extended, is it, it is impossible to determine the effective center of the radiation. The source is considered as an aggregate of point sources, rather than a continuous surface, to each element of which both the inverse square law and the cosine law apply, and which, therefore, considered as a whole, will have a complex law of its own, essentially different from the simple inverse square law. Okay, now, this is a great book, um, 30, 40 bucks, you can get this book in the hard, hard um, cover. Okay, now, the reason this is important, okay, is that these Geigers are calibrated using the formula from the inverse square law. We take measurements using the inverse square law. Intensity equals 4 times pi times r squared. Okay. Um, let's try to get a bag open. Hold on, guys. Bear with me here. Bear with me. I'll put something up on the screen to show you how these Geigers are calibrated using this law. And you can find information everywhere. Okay. Now, what we have here is some uranium glass. Okay, we got two identical plates. They're both the same, a little dirty, but... These are uranium. This is uranium glass. If no, if if uh, if you're unaware, we used to put uranium in glass. Um, it has a distinct color. Some of them tend to glow in the dark. So we'll go ahead. Um, let me go back here. Go back there. Okay. Well, we'll just. Do a few minutes and see what we can get from this uranium glass. Okay. You guys seen what the readings were before. Now we'll see what they are after. We'll take a few minutes here.
Now I understand this this wouldn't get you a, um, the exact reading and all that, but I, I'm just I'm just showing something here for for a quick moment. You can hear the one on the left that actually has ticks. The 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 um the one on the safe cast doesn't. We're up to 60 CPMs on the left. What do we got over there? 66 on the right. I've done this before. They should be right around 90 or so. But I want to make the point. It's in this glass. Okay? This is like ventrification almost. Okay? Uranium in a glass. If this breaks and shatters and gets airborne, there's very small particles. That can be, depending on the size, it could be inhaled, it could be absorbed in the skin, if, um, especially if it comes in contact with water. Okay, one on the left, uh, let's see. Highest it's hit is 76. Uh, let's see, the max over here on the right was 71. These uh these Savecast Geigers are amazing. Um, uh, uh, they they do have something they can do. It's not really a feature, and you're not supposed to do it. Um, but this isn't even mine. Uh, Richard from Boomer U actually sent this to me, so I could check things out and see what it's like. Because I just had the cheap little Geiger. Okay, now this whole. This case will block alpha in some beta. But with the safe cast, the interesting thing is, is that the, the pancake is on the back. So you can actually take this whole setup out, um, which is rather difficult and, and very, uh, I don't like doing it, but I'm gonna do it just so we can kind of see what kind of reading we get when we don't block the alpha. Easy does it. <laughs> Easy does it. All right. Yeah, they, they build these things really good. And the batteries, that's the most important thing about these safe cast um, Geigers that you build. You can get these batteries that can withstand heat, they can withstand cold. And it's just a better... To all around better system to deal with any kind of weather, temperature related, or rain. As you can see, I put mine in a plastic baggie. Okay, so I got it out. And this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like out of the case. Okay. Say that's the, the tube. Okay. Now we were at roughly like 70 CPM, 70 to 80. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down. And I'm about I'm about a half an inch from the glass. Yeah, you can actually hear the B Geigy now. It just has a very slight. So we're getting a lot of alpha out of these plates, it seems. Because it went from 80, we'll say roughly, after it sat there for a few minutes, till now we're up to 444 CPMs within a minute. also gives you uh, becquerels per kilogram, looks like sieverts, micro sieverts, 1.9 micro sieverts. So not all Geigers are the same. That's, that's the whole point to this, is not all Geigers are the same. Here, I'll see if I can maybe 
it, I can't really see it, so. I'm trying to get as close as I can so you guys can see the numbers. Point nine microsieverts per hour, six hundred and fifty eight counts per minute. I've been holding it for about, uh, about two or three minutes or so. So it's just, it blows you away that you know that this plastic bag is blocking this alpha for this Geiger on the left. And that the tube isn't quite like the pancake um, input for this right for this for the safe cast on the right. So yeah, mid six hundreds is is looks about where it's it's starting to level off. We're at two two point oh oh six microsieverts per hour. At the moment. And DS twenty five. Back rolls. Yes, this is an amazing, amazing measuring device. This is has to be the best on the planet, these safe casts. So apparently they're coming out with a new design. Um, it's not I'm not sure when it's supposed to be released yet, but I don't think it's really close. But it's supposed to have some supposed to be better than these these older ones. So um, I want to thank Richard for letting me borrow this. And uh Very, very interesting. And the action immediately drops as soon as you take it away from there. It's, it's wild. Just how much really is going on. But you don't sometimes even really know it. You know? It's pretty wild. So, alright guys. Well, thanks for watching. And, uh... Check out the book. Again, it's the, the Bulletin of the Bureau of Standards, Volume 3, for the inverse square law. I also have Volume 4 as well. <coughs> volume 4. We're in this one. This one's pretty interesting, too, where they figure out the atomic weights. Um, mainly from silver, I believe it was, so... Very interesting, very, very cool subject. Um, and we need to be more informed about it. So I hope this helps in a way. And um, tell me what you guys think. All right, bye.